Dan from SampleLibraryReview.com. Today, we're going to be checking out Iconica section and players from Steinberg. Now, this is the first high-end orchestral library for Steinberg's Haliana sample player. Uh, don't worry if you don't own Halion. It does come with the free Halion SE player, which I was able to load right up into my Mac. It is a weighty library and weighing it 150 gigabytes, so you're going to have a bit of download time and you're going to need to make sure and clear some hard drive space. This is Steinberg's collaboration with Orchestral Tools, famed developer for their Berlin Orchestral Series, as well as, you know, all my trailer buddies, favorites, Metropolis Arc libraries. So I was really excited to check out the library, see what I had to offer. As I mentioned, the library downloads is 150 gigabytes. It contains strings, brass, woodwind sections. Also of note here, this is the only orchestral library recorded entirely at Berlin's legendary Funkhaus Studio. It is a collaboration with orchestral tools, as I mentioned before. It's going to have a different sound, though, than the Orchestral Tools Berlin series, because that was recorded at Teledex. There's Teledex scoring stage, if you remember was recorded with 76 musicians in Studio 2, and it contains adaptive true legatos, tuning scale, multi-microphone positions on the mixer page, and utilize the VST3's unique note expression and expression maps. As mentioned, it is compatible with Halion 6, Halion Sonic 3, and free version Halion Sonic SE, which is included. Normally retails for $799.99. However, I believe there is a 30-day free trial available on Steinberg's website. I'll be sure to include links to take you over to the official Iconica page. Now, I'm starting today's review. We're going to actually play the video backwards to how the actual entire review process went. First, I'm going to play um, a little piece I mocked up using almost only the instruments from the Iconico Orchestra. This is a piece I call The Monument. It is... Um, using a lot of orchestration techniques from uh, Modest Mazorski's Night at Bald Mountain. Just a quick little piece I put together to share how the instruments kind of sound together. So from this demo I mocked up, I learned a lot about the library. The biggest thing I think is um, on a Mac, on a Sierra, I've got 32 gigabytes of RAM. I'm using Logic, and I really had to massage my Halion SE's uh, RAM usage as well as memory usage in order to get it to play back stable. It took me probably half an hour, 45 minutes as I worked on the piece to find the sweet spot. After I did, I didn't have any problems. But up until then, um, you and if you're new to the uh, library and loading up this many instruments, you might have some dropouts like this. So I just wanted to bring that up. If you're new to Halion Sonic or the SE3, if you get Iconica, uh, you may need to tweak out your settings for your 
um, sample player playback for your RAM usage. All right, we've played through the entire piece. I'm just going to break down a few sections and um, explain some of the ways that I used Iconica to get this track together. First thing I'm going to do is just show you the uh, viola, which is what starts off our piece. I'm going to solo it and play it so you can see it in action uh, with the MIDI here. Now, one thing I want to note here is that with the uh, viola articulations, you have legato. There is no legato runs for the viola, although I'll show you, we do have legato runs in some of the other, some of the other instruments. It's always nice that you have that option to stack because so often um, stacking articulations is the way that I'm able to get the most realistic sound, even though it might seem counterintuitive at times. You'll see violin ones have legato runs as one of their articulations, whereas the violas did not. Now, it makes sense. More likely, you would probably have your violins doing your legato runs. I want to play back just the strings themselves so you can hear them kind of together as a group. So you can hear it's got plenty of bite in those uh, staccatos and spiccatos once they switch over to the spiccatos to really dig into that. Uh, it's very lively. And the other thing I want to point out is that I am using uh, another reverb. I'm using Valhalla. I'm basically bussing everything out just a little bit to the Valhalla to give it just a little bit of space. Um, so that's kind of what the string parts were sounding like on their own. Let's listen through the woodwinds here so you could hear just what they sound like together as a group. So one advantage of having a um, instrument with all of your orchestra is that it balances, or it should balance, from section to section. If you're buying sample libraries from one developer for woodwinds and one for brass and one for strings, uh, you're often going to find that you need to spend quite a bit of time finding what that level is to get it to translate into the correct dynamics uh, for each of the sections as they play together. With something like this, it's pretty much a plug and play. I did not hear anything in which I thought to myself, boy, that section sounds louder than it needs to be. I did hear some parts and I thought, oh, that sounds like you only spent two hours putting this piece together because there's some arranging that probably could be cleaned up and advanced. Uh, but for the most part, the big big takeaway from this experiment is that uh, the sections balance really well together, as I kind of expected, just because Orchestral Tools has such a long history of doing this. Uh, I'm going to continue and play the rest of the woodwinds, just so you can hear those on their own. And then I'm, I'm going to highlight just a couple of those wooden, wooden instruments as well. So 
so I forgot to turn on that uh, bassoon, but uh, you know what? Let's go ahead and, and pull him up because uh, these repetition articulations, which is what we heard uh, at the end, is right here. I'll pull that up. And you'll see we've got uh, key switches up high because this is a... a a bass instrument. So I'm just going to play this little piece so you could see that uh, repetition articulation. And you'll notice that's really effective here because I utilized modulation and expression so that repetition actually has a crescendo in it. Uh, moving on, I featured was listening to the oboe on its own earlier. Well, and I think we'll see that playing it soloed here, you get an idea of just the quality. Uh, and the ability of the performance of the oboes. So it's just got a really lovely sound. Just really works well. Um, I didn't use uh, the, I believe there's a second oboe and a second flute. I didn't use those. Bass clarinet is another one of my favorites. Uh, I just used it to kind of be honky and uh, give us a little more bite at that intro with those tacatissimos. You can see here I've got a crescendo because I utilized the MIDI CC for expression and modulation. So yeah, just an overall, a nice, really nice sound there. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the brass parts. For the brass, um, I didn't utilize them a whole lot, but I did find this trumpet part really pleasing, and I'm a big fan of the sound of the trombones. Um, let's go ahead and listen to just the brass parts. Uh, there's going to be a lot of silence, but I think it's best, because then we get a little bit more info about the playback of the instruments. So that, I think, has just a really lovely sound. I hear uh, the attack is a little bit soft on the first note for those trumpets. That's probably something I could program in to get a little better. But overall, just a really nice brass sound. And it really balances well. Um, when I mentioned earlier that I thought that the, uh, the orchestration was lacking, um, I feel like it's well balanced and has my intent in the trumpet section in this piece. And this is the, the section that I was commenting on, but, it, but probably uh, I could have done a little bit more. We've been a little more creative with the rest of this. You know, it's supposed to be the big climax and I didn't even have these guys playing along, which could have added a lot. These guys could have done something. Uh, I think it probably would have filled out the uh, arrangement a little bit more. Pulling up the trumpet alone, just a note here, we could see we've got the same kind of situation in putting together our programming where uh, we don't have legato runs, and that's okay. Uh, and you'll see I used legato to sustains.
actually, I just use legatos, and it sounds really lovely there. I think the one thing I do want to do is play the brass back with uh, no external reverb, because I think that'll help you to hear what the brass section sounds like together out of the box. And again, I didn't use all the brass. I think that that's pretty clear that the uh, there's a there's a difference with that room added. You can hear there's just a little bit more, well, room. That tail, I, I, I'm a big fan of the tail. So uh, you may be saying, well, Don, why didn't you just go into your, your microphones? Here, there. And adding uh, one of these mics. Well, I probably could, <clears throat> but each uh, microphone position I load up is going to eat up more RAM. And as I'd mentioned um, I really was struggling to get the RAM to uh, work with my system, so I really had to play around until I didn't get any issues in playback. Uh, right now, I've got 32 gigabytes. Well, it says I'm preloaded 5 gigabytes into RAM, but I'm allowing a max amount of 28 so I, I, I'm not an expert on this part, but I think that uh, that getting in and learning your settings will be important if you do. If this is a, a library and a system you start to work with. Last but not least, let's check out the percussion. Because I was really pleasantly surprised. The sound overall, the percussion is really nice um, for orchestral percussion. Yeah. So uh, for orchestral percussion, I thought this is just a, a lovely sample set. Nothing is too hyped and nothing is too small. Um, I didn't use any, I mean, there's quite a few more, obviously, percussion instruments. I just wanted to use a handful to start to see how everything would blend together. So now we're going to jump back in time um, to the beginning of the review, and uh, this is more like a first look. I'm going to play through a whole bunch of the instruments, share what the sounds like out of the box, show you how some of the functionality uh, features work and whatnot, and share some more sounds of what Iconic is all about. First thing I usually want to check out is the violins. I've got the violins dynamic loaded up. These are recorded samples of dynamic changes from, here's a short crescendo. We've also got long crescendo. Day crescendos. Forte pianos. Short swell and long swells. So you can see all of the instruments come with this differentiation uh, of the kind of instrument we're loading up. So that was called the dynamic layer. Standard layer is normally going to be my go to because it's got shorts.
Now I'm going to get into a little more info about the interface. But right, right, right now, you could probably see that we've got the ability for their standards to load up with our standard articulations. And then we could add a few as well, which is kind of nice. So if, for instance, we wanted to work with these, but then we also wanted to add a crescendo here. Um, we could change this key switch, I believe, with just a click of the switch to something like our next key switch. You can see key switches down here. And for a violin one, as well as almost all the instruments, they've used an, a, what they call the adaptive true legato. They've recorded samples for the transitions between the notes for the legato performances. The slower you play, the longer the transition. So let's start to see if I can showcase a little bit of that by starting playing slow and then speed up my performance. Now, the only thing I'm going to note here, looking over the instrument, you do have uh, the majority of the articulations you would think of for uh, standard articulations, but you don't have uh, a, any kind of portamento or any kind of really uh, a passionate uh, legato um, for the instrument. So let's go ahead and check out the viola. Here we go. So the strings will load as such. We've got a uh, way to select by category. And I'm going to load up the standard by violas. Uh, note here, I'm, I have these on a um, spinning drive, 72 RPM, because all my SSDs are full. And this is a mighty library weighing in at, at over 150 gigabytes. So I just wanted to mention that. So that's why my load speed um, seems a little slow, whereas I would probably try to put this on an SSD if I was working with it regularly. So let's listen to some viola. Another thing I want to note here, uh, the velocity dependent um, dynamics. So by playing soft, I get a piano. If I really smack it, I'll get a fortissimo, all the range in between. And you also have the ability to utilize, as you can see right here, CC1 automatically will be set up for your dynamics as well. There is a nice bow sound to the quality of this library. If you hear those attacks, that little brush of the bow. However, sometimes you might want just a little bit more attack. What I like about this uh, instrument, the way they've set it up, you can actually set a staccato to perform along. Uh, you could set any articulation stacking. So that's a little bit more of a pa passionate, sustained performance. You can always remove uh, or add different articulations as they go that way as well. Let's listen to the legatos for the viola. I 
have to say I really like the sound of this sample set. One thing I wanted to show was um, they've got a uh, instruments are dependent to which microphone positions, and I think it um, varies. But they all have the close mic. as well as a tree. And of course, um, I always prefer to mix the two together. Gives it that nice bite of the close, but the roominess of the tree. And then there's an A, B, which they say can be used to enhance the sound for a broader perspective. Um, I don't know what that means, so let's listen to the A, B on its own. Okay, that is sounds exactly like the explanation. It is a broader sound. It's more spread across the stereo spectrum, giving you a little bit more of the room sound, which is nice. So I wonder how uh, just mixing A, B in the close, what that might do for us. Yeah, that's a really nice sound as compared to the tree and close. And then the surround, um, it's actually, they've set this up so you actually can use it as uh, output for surround application. Um, perfect for adding some ambience is what they list. So let's just take a listen to the surround, playing back through stereo, screen captured, and then play back on YouTube. You might hear a couple little glitches along the way. So much of that is most likely my screen recording software. Um, I've been having a lot of trouble with it lately, and I can't get a buffer size that works, so please excuse that as we plug away. I always have to check out the cello libraries. Let's take a listen. And of course, the legato. the sound of this cello section. It's so warm and the frequency response in that upper section sounds, um, it has so much clarity yet this dark, deep fullness to it. Uh, of course, I uh, might as well play those tremolos for you. Yep. 
you know, I'm of course controlling everything uh, dynamics with a combination of my um, mod wheel, CC1, CC11 for volume, and then also uh, it's a variant on my uh, velocity. <laughs> So another thing I wanted to do is test out just some of the strings to hear the string sound. I do a lot of ostinatos, especially on trailer tracks, but I pulled up the uh, Iconica Spiccatos for the entire section. Uh, I didn't use the violins too because I didn't write for them on here, but I just want to play this so you can hear what it sounds like uh, with an ostinato for the strings. Just a note here, this is the uh, ostinatos from my Epic Hybrid Trailer Track course, which I teach. I'll include a little uh, link below so you can not only listen to the track, but uh, see what that course has to offer. Now with a quick listen back, I hear that I've got a really nice uh, set of short articulations for all, all four string sections. Um, however, I felt that it sounded a little bit uh, dry. The room does sound nice. And if we go back into the mixer, you can see we've got the tree mic on here. Um, it's cranked up. Uh, but I thought, it, you know, it'd probably sound better, a little more cinematic if I add a little verb. So of course, I used one of my standard uh, verb selections and played I'll play the same thing back for you so you could hear a little section of it with a little bit of re my selection reverb. So working with it that, I thought that this was a really nice, clean, bold set of samples to use for ostinatos. And it's definitely got a nice, um, substantively dark sound for this uh, kind of performance with a lot of shorts. So I found that uh, I probably would be able to use this quite a bit for ostinatos. And I think it sounds... Just fantastic, the sample set here. For the horns, I've loaded up the standard set um, of articulation, standard instrument. Uh, you can see that it is basically right here, horn standard versus horn standard. So it's got solo brass as well as section brass. With the interface, uh, there's a couple of things I've shown you that you could click and add where you want your key switch for articulation, which is always handy. The other thing I really like is the ability to just add, um, let's see, F6, F0 is our last one. So I could go ahead and build my own here and stack these articulations with my staccato and my legato on one here. So it gets a lot more bite than, say, just our legato transition.
though this may not be uh, an ideal articulation for staccatos when you're trying to get your legato transitions, but the idea is, you know, even on something like the sustains, we'd really be able to take advantage, get a little bit more bite to our sustains where so often it's needed. Now, one of the things I do like is the quality of the sample set. It's a very, um, it's very bold and full. It's got a lot of bite. It's just very nice balanced across the frequency spectrum. Uh, and I'm sure that that has a lot to do with the orchestral tools guys guidance with all their orchestral recording experience. Next, uh, instrument that I loaded up for us to take a look at is the trombones. So here we've got the brass trombones standard right here. This one's loaded up and you can see it's got, uh, actually this is the dynamics, sorry, the dynamics loaded up and you can see it's got the different kinds of crescendos and decrescendos. Now you probably notice this interface is very similar looking to that of the um, orchestral tools interface, interface, their capsule, the way it utilizes the uh, showing you the dynamics and the way it's triggered either by velocity or you could set it for a number of other factors as well. So you still have control um, with the standard instrument. I'm loading up here. And again, this is the standard uh, preset, and we can stack it and load additional instruments there. We can also add our own additional key switches. Looks like it'll let you load an, a max of uh, eight across your keyboard for each instrument. So with the uh, bass clarinet and the woodwinds, And that's a velocity dependent uh, articulation. You see, it's, if I play soft, it's playing the piano. Play it really hard and it'll play the forte. The way they've set up their woodwinds is very much like a very uh, real orchestra where you've got one, uh, we got individual players. So we've got, uh, for our woodwinds, we've got our clarinets, one and two, and then a bass clarinet, and then a bassoon, one and two, and a contra bassoon, an English horn, two flutes, and a piccolo flute, and then two oboe players. I've got the oboe player loaded up right now.
move it along here, I'm going to show you a little bit of the percussion they've got. With these toms, we've got a setup, I believe, for left and right hand. You can see we've got the stick articulation loaded. And here's the timpani mallets. It'll be a little softer hit. It's got a nice little flap to it when you get the fortissimos. And then muted hits there. So that's the toms. Let's take a look. I'll show you the way they got their drums and percussion set up here. You've got uh, bell trees, bongos, castanets, chimes, congas, cowbells, uh, a variety of cymbals, uh, patik, and crusta, four different snares, tom toms, two different tambourines, uh, two different settings for the trom uh, the toms. I have the tom standard loaded right now. Uh, they got high triangle, low triangle, fibro slap, and wood blocks. You know. Let's make sure that you're aware here and that there's chromatic percussion as well. We'll take a look at those in a minute. I loaded up the Tom dynamic articulations so we can see we've got uh, crescendos. And the nice thing about this, these triggers happen up here, whereas you probably noticed that the standard hits uh, loaded up down in these areas. So we could probably load up two different the Tom Dynamics as well as the Tom Standard on the same MIDI channel and just have our all of our Toms right there at the ready. Uh, as far as looking at a few of these chromatic percussion, uh, of course, I want to hear the timpani, but there's also... Uh, uh, glockenspiels, marimbas, temple blocks, vibraphones, tubular bells, and xylophones. So it looks like with our timpani standard instrument loaded up, we've got hard mallets here. And it looks like we've got left and right hand strikes cut across two octaves. And then uh, additional articulation for rolls. Which is really nice because, again, we can use our uh, volume and our uh, expression to crossfade between those different uh, articulations for dynamics range. So this first one, the C0, is the hard mallets, and then we've also got the medium mallets. And as you can guess, those dynamics, we could load those articulations up uh, as well, just by extending what articulations we're going to use. Here we'd use our crescendo shorts. And here's crescendo longs. And just for fun, play a decrescendo. No day crescendo longs. So most likely for me, I would utilize the uh, rolls for my, my mallet rolls. For my crescendos that didn't fit these exactly. Let's see what else I got loaded up. I just did a random kind of selection here that I wanted to kind of hear. 
trumpet section. Nice little staccatissimo, nice and tight. Really nice sound of those. And one thing I do really appreciate about the way this sample set playing back is you really hear multiple players playing together um, very realistically because one guy's a tiny bit late there and one guy's a little out of tune once in a while. Very natural, very realistic. Then the other thing uh, we could always do, of course, which we've done on some of these, is looks like we can load up different crescendos. We got a decrescendo there as well. And of course, you see that the key switches highlight, so we can always change these to be sequential if that's the way we wanted to uh, be working with them. And we just touched the surface of everything that Iconica sections and players has to offer. I wanted to just uh, dive in a little bit here and share first look of it with you. I'm really liking this collection. I like the tonal qualities. I can't wait to use all the instruments together to see what would happen in a real world piece. You know, if there's any real... I don't know, con. I'm, I'm going to say it's the um, inconsistencies of the ability to utilize microphone positions. You know, it would have been nice to have the option for all the same microphone positions across all the instruments. However, I imagine that, that Tobias and uh, Sasha have made these decisions on purpose. The guys over at Orchestral Tools tend to really know what they're doing. I'm going to trust that this isn't really a con at the end of the day to get a very realistic orchestral performance out of. The other big pro, I think, that this, since this is the first full-blown orchestral instrument for the Halion sample player, I think this is going to open up a lot of doors, especially for those who are Cubase and Dorico users. Might just inspire me to jump into Dorico, which has been of my long list of software to check out. Thanks for spending a little time with me checking out Iconica sections and players from Steinberg. I'll be sure to include links to take straight over to get that 30 day free trial if you wanna check it out. Love to hear your thoughts. Please comment in the description below. Like, share, and subscribe. Always love your support. And be sure to head over to samplelibrarywreview.com for the latest news, reviews, and our weekly deal compressor, where we round up all the music software deals that made our reader for the week.